Welcome to this week's episode, guys. The last one of the series, can you believe it? A dub living in Kerry, lost in Tyrone. There's only one thing for it, a pint. Let's go. Tell you one thing guys, I'm looking forward to this because this is the first drop of alcohol I have had since we started this entire journey. This episode guys, it's all about kind of like a trip down memory lane and a kind of reminisce of Travo Travel series that we've done so far. And I thought, you know, where better to do it than in a real kind of traditional Irish bar? And I, I love a boozer, like that's what I call a real traditional bar, it's a great boozer. You know, you kind of got like a little cubby hole over there where the owl fellas would hide with their pints and their chasers and bar, you know, I, I love it. So I said to myself, I want to point out some of the, my best moments, uh, some of the guys' best moments that we've had. And I said to myself, do you know what, if you're in a boozer, what better to eat than an owl toasty? Remember when we loved simple things, non-complicated stuff? And that kind of got me thinking, all we want now is a whole load of different ingredients thrown into bread that we can't even pronounce. You cannot beat a good old toasted special. A bit of ham, cheese, tomato and onion. But Trevo Travels wasn't just about food. It was also about traveling around to location. It's a really huge problem when we were filming this series. But our problem was, was we met such great people along the way. We went to such amazing locations. We cooked such great food, met such great producers and all that kind of stuff. It was impossible to bring it all down into a 30 minute show, really hard. So unfortunately we didn't get a chance to show some of the stuff throughout the show, but that's what this episode is all about. So I want you to sit back and have a look at some of the stuff that was, it wasn't a question of that it didn't make the show. It was a fact that well, we had to, it was like picking like your favorite child. We all have one, we know that, but it was like picking your favorite child. We actually had to just say, that's the decision, that's what we're doing. But this episode, you're gonna get a chance to see some incredible footage, meet some brilliant people that you wouldn't have seen. So sit back, relax, put your feet up, check this out. The unseen footage, that's a great name for a show. The unseen footage of Travo Travels. Check it out. Let's have a look at this place. Wow. Look at this for a selection. It's the boss man here himself, is it? Perfect. How are you doing, Paul? Nice to meet you. How's things? Not so bad at all. So tell me a little bit about yourself. We basically dry cure uh, the bacon on the farm. Okay. And we don't add any water. So it's proper bacon. So it's, there's cooking there. There's wow. no white, no white guns or nothing run there. Beautiful. You know? And you process it yourself? We, get, we process it in a small factory on the farm. Wow. And uh, because just a lot of people have asked us where you get bacon you used to get yeah. without the water and the guns run out of it. You're more than welcome to try yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. No, Give me whichever try. you think is the best. When you try the top one, you're going to have to try all of them. Well, I can't say no to that. Um, Offering me cheese, I will definitely not say no. You'll, you'll, you'll taste the creaminess of the milk. Yeah. And because we don't wax the cheese, okay. and we take a bit more moisture out of the milk, um, you get a drier cheese, not sticking to the to the top of your your, your 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 palate. Yeah. Uh, you get the creaminess of the milk, a bit of an earthiness from the rind, and then you get a parmesan flavour coming through at the back of your palate. Very slight. Tell me this now. Irish people have an incredible habit of cutting the rind off their cheese because they don't think they can eat it. <laughs> exactly. The rind is, is, is like the it's crust the of the bread. It's the best part. It's the best Thank part you of it. Very much. Tell me what you got going on here. Yeah, we grow rapeseed oil and hemp oil. It's all grown on the farm, cold pressed, filtered and bottled. This is our pure rapeseed oil. This is the one that won the gold in the Blast and Heron last year and a great wow. taste award. So you're more than welcome to try it. I'm going to have to try that. Take a little bit of the bread and put it in. Oh, wow. Jesus, that's fantastic. Thank you. Oh, beautiful flavor. Um, we don't 
um, put any insecticides or pesticides on the farm. Right. And when we go to harvest, we don't um, kill it off. We actually go in, cut it, let it lie for a week or so, and then come back in and harvest it that way. Wow. And does that add to the flavour then, does it? Or? Yeah, because yeah. you're not adding anything else to it, so it's as natural as possible. Yeah. And then when we co-press it, we leave quite a lot of it still in the seed, yeah. so we're getting the best of the oil out yeah. of it. I love that you got the bread to try it, because it's very popular, say, in, you know, down along the continent, Italy, France, and all that kind of stuff. We Irish people think that you just cook with your oil, yeah. but to have oil with a bit of bread, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, something like that, it's just, it's a beautiful That's little kind need. of starter, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, Pat, I promised you a surprise. Not tea. Not tea. It's Trevo's tea. <laughs> How do you like your tea? Weak or strong? Oh, strong. You ever had a hot port before? A hot port? Simple. You're in the deepest potching country here. I want to warn you first. <laughs> so this must be good. <laughs> they love it. We're going to put in a measure of port, boiling water. Hold your cup there now. I like my tea pretty strong. How simple is this, Pat? Lemon with a couple of cloves in it. Lovely. As is. And a little bit of boiling water. Because I tell you what now, there is nothing better than a griskin wrap and a hot port overlooking stunning surroundings. That's it, as simple as that. <laughs> Strong enough for you? That is beautiful. What a beautiful surrounding. I told you. Cheers. That is a surprise. I had a surprise for you. <laughs> I've had a brilliant day and we are in one of the most stunning locations in Ireland. I can't thank you enough. Brilliant. The show was all about the characters we were meeting, but I tell you what now, I know you think we're an incredibly well-oiled professional machine here because we come across so well on the TV. However, however, there were times, there were times even thinking about it makes me laugh. There were times things didn't always go our way. Loopers and this kind of stuff. Dave, there's a lot of, there's a lot of little wild trout in here, guys. What's the crocodile? Ah, <laughs> you wish. Dean, tell the guys, what did you do in Game of Thrones? I was wilding male 74. <laughs> wilding male 74, get back out of here, Dean, brilliant. So here we are, right in the middle of Game of Thrones, cars everywhere, but we don't care, because we're filming Trevo Travels. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. That's a different show, boys. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I think we've got enough here to get going with some sort of a dish, guys. Let's get it, let's get out of here, let's get our seafood and let's get cooking. Oh my God, that is fantastic. I, I, Twitter, you have a feel day, but Paul, I, I, you're, you have an amazing sausage. I'm sorry. It's, it's just, <laughs> guys, what an absolute fantastic day I've had here in Toman Park. But I'm never going to be on this pitch again, so I'm not going until there's one last thing that I do. Check this out. Oh, he missed that one. I told you. Blooper. It's a blooper. Would you believe there's actually like tons more footage? That's only like part of it, but if you go onto irishtv.com, you'll see even more clips. You'll see all the shows, they're all up there. It's brilliant. Make sure, guys, when you're tweeting about the show, hashtag Trevo Travels. I want to know who's watching this show. But I tell you what, guys, you know, there's somebody sitting at home there now going, yeah, your man's kind of like having a bit too much to drink now when like filming this. You clearly haven't seen any of my other stuff. I, 
I don't care. Like, do you remember those two lobsters? Great, I'm showing you. Everybody always gets worried about, I can't do this, I can't. Look at what I'm cooking on, a bloody, a bucket. And we're just fire and a couple of grills and off we go. Now, nothing will be escaping me on that way. Okay, everybody wants to know the most humane way to kill a lobster. Okay, so let's just go through it. Some guys turn around and they say, okay, freeze them for half an hour to put them to sleep. It doesn't put them to sleep, it freezes them. Other guys say, put them into a nice big pot of cold water and bring it up to the boil slowly. That's killing them slowly. This is the way to do it for this particular dish, okay? Trust me, because if you're worried about a lobster having feelings, there's a good chance he has hearing too. And he's down here going, Hello, I'm down here, I can hear you. So let's just get it over and done with nice and quickly. It's simple. He's got a little cross right in the middle of his head and we get a very sharp knife and we go. He is now dead and he didn't feel a damn thing. He didn't hear me talking about it and he didn't see anything. And it is simple. The only problem is, is his mate there is going, hello, yes, you are next. So we go straight down and this, is absolutely beautiful. Listen very carefully, and this is where people actually make the mistake. But he's squealing, he's not actually squealing. It's the flesh inside expanding out and pushing any fluid out through the shell, that's what it is. So look at this guys, we are so good to play. I better bring the plate over here to me. And how easy was it? How do you know if it's cooked guys? Just touch the flesh like that, it's firmed up enough, but not too firm, okay? Not too firm, you've overcooked it. So let's get. A couple of these bad boys here. I'll tell you what, lads. I don't normally taste the food when I cook it because I don't have to, but I'm definitely doing it this time because you cannot beat, whoa, it's getting hot. You cannot beat lobster cooked on the barbie just like this. Look at that, guys. How simple, how amazing, how beautiful, how natural, how wild is that? Guys, did you see that? We've just after cooking lobsters on the rocks, it took minutes because that's how easy it is to cook when you follow me and you're cooking with Trevo on my travels. Get a close up guys, because I'm gonna be tucking into that very soon. So, but I tell you what, wait till you see what's coming up after the break. Guys, and I tell you what, I'm actually, I'm getting a little bit sad. It's the last part of the last episode of this series. <laughs> so what better way to finish it than what we're all about? Cooking a beautiful dish. I wanna show you something simple. Look, I've got only a handful of ingredients. Some beautiful fresh mackerel, pin boned and filleted. Get your fishmonger to do that. A Couple of spring onions, tomato, lemon, couple of capers and butter. It's simple and that's what if you've been watching the series all along, it's what it's all about. Don't be worried about measurements. Don't be worried about quantities. Don't be worried about anything like that, recipes. Just watch what I'm doing and listen to what I'm saying. I'll hold you by the hand and I'll take you all the way on how to create amazing food. So let's get cracking. So what you wanna do guys, is just get your pan nice and hot. And look, I'm cooking on a bar table, on a stool, in Quinn's Bar in Dungannon in County Tyrone. If I can do it here, how easy is it for you guys to do it at home in your house? So we're gonna start off with a little bit of olive oil, or that's all we need, about a tablespoon. That's all we need. And it's gonna be simple. If you were to get this in a restaurant in Spain, you'd say, oh my God, they're the most amazing tapas ever. So that's what we're doing. It's kind of a simple little snack tapas dish, something like that. Fresh mackerel. So let's turn them all over here. And we're gonna cook them on the skin side down first. Get that nice and crispy. Turn them over and then just finish them off with the residual heat and the pan. Season, season, season. I'm always telling you, it's all about seasoning. Flaked rock salt, guys. It's the best stuff out there, trust me. So you're just gonna put a little bit on it a little bit of cracked black pepper. A couple of twists of the pepper mill. Has anybody lost yet? No, of course it's not. Simple. If you wanna add on stuff, chili flakes, or you wanna put on curry powder, whatever that kind of stuff, if you like that kind of stuff, just do it. There's no problems, but this is nice and simple. So we've got a lovely hot pan here, and you'll see by the time it starts smoking up. Never panic with your pan. If you're going, oh my God, it's getting too hot, just take it off, don't worry about it. So we're gonna put in our fillets of mackerel. 
beautiful. And they'll curl up initially, don't worry about that, they go back down in a sec. I think I'm actually gonna put all four in. Now, like I said to you guys, the whole show of Trevo Travels, the tourism, taking you to amazing locations, it's also about the food. So I'm gonna give them about two and a half minutes for the skin to crispen up, flick them over, turn off the heat, and let the residual heat finish them off. While we're waiting on that, check this out. When we come back, our macro will be ready. If you ever wondered why Kerry lamb tastes so good, just look at them. They got all these mountains to themselves, for God's sake. I'd taste good if I lived up here. Huh? Look at this, guys. This is real Ireland, lads. This is where you should be going with your Nintendos and your Xboxes and all that kind of stuff. Climb up a bloody mountain and have a laugh. All you guys with your fit bodies and all that kind of stuff. That's all last year. Shave off your beards. Dad bods is the new fashion. We're gonna take the world by storm. Something cuddly, something to pinch onto. What do we do tonight, darling? I don't know, go for a jog, do 50 sit-ups. Screw that, get out and have a laugh. This is what life is all about, ha! Now, Mike, there's two reasons as to why I'm doing the porridge. I'm gonna need my energy for what's coming up later on. But my mother always gives out to me, she says, you never mention me on the telly. Well, here you go, mom. My mother makes the worst porridge known to man. And I hated it as a kid growing up because there was water and salt thrown into it. And that was about it. So I'm gonna make you and maybe Roger a beautiful porridge. <laughs> so porridge goes in, guys. You can put in all milk, whatever you want. This is a real Pete Floyd moment, lads. There's stuff moving everywhere. <laughs> I wish you can see the crew hanging on for dear life they are. And a bit of water. I'll tell you what, Mike, we couldn't get in a more stunning location here to have a little bit of a picnic. Even Roger's joining in, lads. He's tucking into his own grub. But I've been bragging about this bloody porridge now for so long. Now, Mom, that's how you make real porridge. So we'll pour now a bit into the bowl. Would Roger eat the porridge, would he? We can try him. We can. I'm sure he'll, he'll be excited about it. Try and out blast it out there. And try I have the bit pot. Of, you've the pot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell ya, it doesn't get much more rustic than this, guys. Your mother would be proud of you. <laughs> she's she's having him blinding me. That's what my mother is doing now. Here's a good one here. Wow. So this is your Bramley. That's the Bramley. That's your Bramley. These aren't ready yet because they're not. Uh, they're never really ready until say maybe the first first uh, first week in November. Right. You can see. Uh, so what type is this then? This is going delicious. Okay. So that's more of an eating apple. That's a, that's an eating apple. And that's your cooking. That's apple. your cooking apple. But explain to me this. I, I can't well, believe this, it. this was a craft uh, about 35 years ago. But Dolly would have come in and he would have cut the branch. Yeah. So he would have uh, sliced it and then he would put the other... Are you saying my daddy? Yes, my daddy Your done dad? That. Yes, my father done that. Wow, my that's incredible. That. So, two different trees, they obviously join up together. We get two different apples. That's right. From the same tree. From the same tree. Like a Frankenstein uh, apple tree or something like mm -hmm. that. This is, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. Two different apples from the same tree. Now listen, as much as I'm enjoying talking to you, I think the time has come. Right. Enough chit chat. Will we go and have a tip up? We'll go and have a tip up. I can't wait to try this. No problem. Let's go. Let's go. So we start off with this big boy here. So always think presentation, presentation, presentation. So try things like a little bit different. One skin side up. Look at that beautiful guy. One skin side down. Okay. One skin side up. And one skin side down. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. A couple of minutes in the pub. So we've got that all diced up. Now what we're gonna do is just pan, just really, really low heat. And I'm gonna put about another two tablespoons of olive oil in. And this is what your salsa is. So you don't want it hot, you just wanna warm this through. So literally the lowest heat you can, okay? But here's a little twist, okay? A little bit of walnut oil or sesame oil or something slightly different. So you're getting this taste, you're going, the hell is that? It's like that's just not olive oil. That's what you want to be doing in cooking. Just simple little things. So about 
only like a teaspoon. That's all we need, something slightly different. Let's put in all our tomato and our spring onions. And that's again, just a real gentle heat. We just want to warm it through. Now, quick lesson on a lemon. A lemon, picture it as in, not quarters, but in thirds. And all the seeds are right there in the middle third. So if you just slice down here, on the outside third, see the way, look, there's the seed in there, nothing in here. Great, so you don't need to be like squeezing it over your hands, trying to catch pips, because they don't exist, because I've shown you how to eliminate the seeds. All of a sudden, look at that, guys, right? Just a couple of squeezes of the lemon juice. Just for a little bit of a bite. And the, the kind of sharpness goes really well with the, with the coarse fish that mackerel is, okay? Season, 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 guys, a little bit of pepper. A little bit of rock salt. Not too much, we've already seasoned the fish, so don't forget that, it's just to finish that little bit off. All you healthy people, I know you love when I do this, a little knob of butter, just finish it all off. And these guys, capers. They give like, I know we put a little bit of lemon juice in it, but they just give a lovely kind of a sharpness into it as well to finish off your salsa. So when we go with them, just, there's about a tablespoon in there. Our, there's always one at home. There was actually 26, if you're that really worried about it. Give our board a nice little wipe. Let's get our plate. And that's what it's all about. I can actually turn off the heat because I'm listening. You see, the, it's saying, I'm done. Stop cooking me, I'm done. And that's what the whole show is about on the food side of things. It's, if I can cook dishes like this in pretty strange locations or difficult locations, it's so easy for you guys to do it at home. But this was minutes real time and you saw how easy it was. And the flavor of it, look at that. That is your beautiful salsa. You've just warmed it through. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. So we'll just pour it over like this. The director absolutely loves when I've got color like this, and make sure, make sure you get the oil, the butter, the flavor, the juice that's in them. That's all part and parcel of it. That's as simple as that, guys. Now, I said it there earlier on, I'm getting like, I'm kind of sad that the show is finishing because we've had so much fun. We've had such great crack with the crew. It has literally been a laugh along the way. When I look back and I think, like the whole series of, Trevo Travels, what, like, what was I trying to achieve here? I was saying, you know what, I've been to places that I never knew existed. And I hope that you guys at home watching this saying, I didn't know that was there, I wanna go there. I wanna cook the food, because it was so easy. He cooked it on the side of a cliff. He cooked it up a mountain. He cooked it on a bar table in the middle of County Tyrone in Dungannon. The guy made it look so easy, we can do that. But most of all, what I want is that we're an amazing country, full of amazing people. And I think we need to celebrate that more often. We need to stop putting ourselves down. Like there are countries throughout the world that are like painting their buildings green or lighting them up on St. Patrick's Day because they want to be a bit of Irish. We're the only country whose Taoiseach, whose prime minister has an open invite every single year for one day on St. Patrick's Day. People love the Irish, but we just, I don't know what it is about us. But if I can convince you to get in it, get behind it and like just celebrate the fact of we're actually, we're not that bad. We're not that bad and we have so much to offer. We have incredible places to visit. Stop going away for weekends. Stay here on our own shores. Visit what we have, the stunning scenery. If I can get one person to do that, Jesus, that's put a smile on my face. It's the end of the series. It's a bit kind of sad really, isn't it? But look, what a way to go out. We've had some fun. We've cooked a great little dish. Beautiful fresh mackerel with a lovely salsa. Hope I'll see you soon, guys. Get tweeting. The more you guys tweet, the more chance I have of getting series two. Ha! Trevo travels only on Irish TV. See you soon. Is that it, guys? Are we done? Can I take this mic off? Can't wait to see the bloody back of you. Six weeks filming with you guys. I've done it all. These guys out here think I'm going to be cooking for them. You think I'm going to spend my time cooking for them? Pfft, sandwiches. That's all they deserve. Let's go. How are we doing guys? I have been cooking for you all day, but I tell you what, I haven't seen my wife in about two weeks, so I'm gonna give this young one an old kiss. Thank you. Plunk it, place the tune, barman, throw me on a pint. That is a wrap. <laughs>